I found an article that lists 10 of the strangest real planets that exist in our universe. And today we're gonna go through all 10 of them in Space Engine. All right, so the first planet in the article is Wasp76b, the exoplanet that rains molten iron. Okay, so let's search it first, then we'll read more about it. Okay, here it is. Whoa. Super bright. It looks like it's completely on fire. So let's read about it. Spotted in 2013, this planet is tidally locked to its star. So only one side, this side right here, is the only side that will ever see the sun. So the theory is that there is iron in the air on this side that's heated by the star. And as the wind of the planet sweeps that iron over to the dark side, it cools down and the iron falls as rain. That is super cool. Are there any other planets in this system? No, just Wasp76b. Super close to its home star, as you can see. Turn on this light. And you can see that it's like some of the mass is getting shot out. You can see on this blue trail. Super close to its star, the planet that rains iron. So apparently this cool side is a lot colder. Oh, wait, we can actually land on it. Oh, oh, I'm on it. Whoa, I went underneath the gas to a, a semi-solid surface, it looks like. Can we turn off the clouds and the atmosphere? Look, it has like a, a layer, two layers. Interesting. You get like caught on it. Check it out. It's like lava clouds that I guess these are the clouds that rain iron. And there's the star. You can see how big it is from the, the surface of this planet. That's super cool. Okay, next is HD 189733B. Okay, this planet supposedly rains glass. Check it out. So it looks pretty similar to our last planet, but the composition's a little bit different in that this planet orbits its star very quickly in just 2.2 days. So let's actually play time and we could probably watch it move. So yeah, it goes around its star very fast. So this planet is supposedly blue. So let's, let's turn on a uh, realistic lighting and then get close to it and see what color it says it is. It's impossible to see. The side that we do see is red and it's too dark over here. So let's turn on a little bit of ambient lighting. Whoa, you can see the radiation from the star solar eclipse type thing there. So we're going to add a tiny bit of ambient lighting and this will allow us to see the back or it should. Maybe. I'm turning it up as high as it'll let me. Is this planet just like pitch black then? Hmm. According to the article, it says it should be blue, but I guess we can't really see. So this planet supposedly has liquid molten glass that pelts the planet's surface. And the winds on this planet go up to 5,600 miles per hour. These supersonic winds cause the exoplanet's glass rains to arc sideways towards the ground rather than just falling. Also picking up silicate particles, turning them into microscopic projectiles. Wow, that is crazy. Too bad we can't really see the blue color. Let's go to our next one. Okay, this one's called Gliese 1132b. And the caption on this one is the planet that grew a second atmosphere. Okay, so this planet supposedly has a lot of volcanic activity on it. And it's so bright you can't even see it. But that volcanic activity breaks apart the core of the planet and allows gases to come into the atmosphere and cause a super thick atmosphere, which is gonna increase the heating even more, similar to Venus. So this planet almost flexes because it's tidally locked with its star and it's also very close to it. So it's gonna get very stretched. Okay, our next planet is Kepler-10b. Okay, Kepler-10b is interesting because it orbits a 20th of the distance of Mercury to the sun from its star. So Mercury would be probably about here maybe this is like where mercury would be but this planet or orbits so close to its star you can see its trail that it leaves off it orbits around its star in less than one earth day and the temperature on this planet is about 2300 degrees celsius this planet is super hot and because this one's tidally locked too this one also has iron silicate rain on its dark side this planet has been nicknamed an abomination planet because of how hot this planet would be. This planet has been compared to Mustafar from Star Wars. Just imagine that really lava-y planet that could, this is what the surface of this one could look like. Okay, our next one has been nicknamed the Whiplash Planet because of its super elliptical orbit. Yeah, you can see it on here. So this is its orbit line. It gets super close to its home star right here 
and then its orbit stretches all the way out super far. And check this out, this one actually looks pretty cool. It's got a little ring system going on. Let's watch its orbit. I mean, I'm sure it'll take a long time. But at its furthest, it's this far. Okay, let's like get, like not like land on it, but this is the home star at its furthest. That's what it looks like. And then at its closest, oh, it speeds up when it gets closer. So you have to like watch it, like watch. Boom. Slow down, slow down. Ah, I missed it again. Okay, right here is its closest point. So now if we get like right here and look up, that's the size of the star at its closest point. Check that out. The solar flares are so cool to see. Okay, well, this is a cool planet. Our next one is actually an entire system. So let's look it up, the TY-178 system. So this system has been called the system of harmony and chaos. So here's the system. It looks pretty good so far. Let's just take a look at some of these planets. So the first one here is a hot arid Terra. Whoa, check this planet out. I definitely want to go land on this planet to see what kind of features we can get. Look at this. It's like, whoa, wow, that's really cool. And there's its star. So if you're standing on this planet and you look up in your sky, the star takes up that much of the sky. That is so crazy. Yeah, realistic lighting, it would be so bright here. You're at 559 degrees Celsius and there's your star. Oh, look at these sunspots. The detail you can get. Look, you can actually see the star moving. And the colors on this, especially with the HDR lighting, check that out. Different mountains and stuff to fly onto. Very cool planet. This is probably the coolest one we've seen so far. Let's see what else is in this system though. Okay, our next one's a hot sub-Neptune which looks all right. And then we got a mini Neptune. This one looks pretty cool. I like the formations on it. Then a warm mini Neptune. They have, that one actually does look like Neptune. You got like the similar spots on it. Okay, here we go. Warm super oceanic aquaria. So this one looks not that interesting, but that's those are clouds on it. So if you turn off the clouds, it is a water planet. That is cool. There could definitely be life on this planet underneath these oceans. So the clouds cover the whole sky because the oceans are so thick that there's just clouds everywhere. It's like a super thick water cycle. So it's just like storms all the time. So the whole thing is covered completely with clouds. That's pretty cool. And then we got another one, a, another warm super oceanic aquaria. So similar thing with this, you turn off the clouds and this one's a water planet also. I wonder how deep the oceans go. Can you actually fly in the oceans? You can't. Oh, uh, but once you start going a certain speed, it doesn't let you anymore. So that is the TOI system. Pretty cool system. We got some cool planets. I still think that first one there is my favorite one of the system. All right, thank you guys so much for watching this video. There are a couple of planets on the article that Space Engine does not have integrated into the game. Um, but if you have other exoplanets or just anything in the universe that you want me to look for, leave it down in the comments below. You guys are awesome, and I'll see you next time.